Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. It was a great start to the season on Monday for J.D. Martinez, who homered in his first at bat of the year. And then Alex Avila followed up with a two-run shot. Both are back in the lineup today. We bring you game number two of the 2015 season. Today, it's the Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen. Glad to have you with us here this afternoon for Tigers Ball. And, well, as opening days go, Rod, Monday is about as good as you could have gotten in Detroit. No doubt about that. David Price, he went out there. He did his thing. So, so uh, you know, assessment is the newcomer. He also got off on both sides of the ball. And J.D. Martinez played long ball as well. Really good baseball game. Yeah, David Price was great on opening day. Hopefully more of the same today for Amani Ball Sanchez. You know, we talked about Sanchez on quite a few occasions. And for me, when he is healthy, and he's going out there and he's locating his fastball with the curveball, the slider, and the change. There are very few pitchers that are better than him. One of the things he's going to have to do today against some of the right-handers of the Minnesota Twins, make him hit the ball in the air the other way like David Price did. And if he does so, he'll have similar success. All right, a little bit cool and overcast today, but still baseball nonetheless. A little bit chilly, but that's all right. Tigers baseball coming our way. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Johnny Kane. Coming up in this one this afternoon, how about these first impressions? The on assessment has did it with his glove and his bat. Tigers twins. Game two next.
Today, the field conditions are presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. It's 39 degrees in game time. It is chilly this afternoon. We expect it will be that way most of this day. The Chevy starting lineup for the Minnesota Twins looks like this. Santana, Dozier, Maurer, your top three. Torrey Hunter once again cleaning up. Kenny Vargas, uh, 348 batting average in 12 games against the Tigers. Bloop is at third. Bottom three of Arcia, Suzuki, and Schaefer. They're facing Manuel Sanchez. He is presented today by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. And just 21 starts last year for the right-hander Sanchez. He finished 8-5 and five with a 3.43 ERA. Just to refresh your memory on his arsenal, he's got a couple of fastballs, twos and fours. Also a curveball slider and a really good changeup. And here we go. The first pitch of today's ball game is a strike called at 108 here in the afternoon. The Tigers and Minnesota Twins. Danny Santana was 0 for 4 in the opener. And he shows bunts and leaves it foul. No balls and two strikes. And David Price did a magnificent job of keeping their speedy leadoff hitter off base a couple of days ago. Well, it was the first time that the Twins were shut out on opening day since 2000. And they have really struggled on opening day. But David Price, the big reason why on Monday. Here's the 0-2. Popped him up. Left side of the infield, Castellanos coming over. And one gone. That'll bring up Ryan Dozier, which also brings us to our Sam Bernstein matchup here this afternoon. Who's got the Bernstein advantage? Well, that would go to Sanchez. How about this? Dozier just one for 14 against him. And one of the things that Annabelle has been able to do against Dozier, he's been able to spot his forcing fastball away from Brian. Brian known as a pull hitter. Therefore, Brian hasn't done much in the past against Sanchez. Dozier is swinging on the first, pops it straight up, middle of the infield. And Castellanos to the mound to make the catch. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense, presented by Bill Fox Chevrolet in the outfield. They have Cespedes, Ghost, and J.D. Martinez in the infield, left or right, Casianos, Iglesias, Kinsler, Miguel Cabrera, Avila is the catcher. Cespedes last year led uh, MLB with 16 outfield assists. It's amazing that the uh, opponents still run on you in a Cespedes. Here's Joe Maurer now with two outs. Maurer hit 277 last year, the lowest batting average of his career in a single season. Looks at the ball high and away, 1-0. Maurer was one for four in the opener. Anthony Ghost in center field probably plays the shallowest center field I've seen anybody play in a long, long time. It's going to be a one, two, three inning for Sanchez on the four, three ground out. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the first. To lead off the Tigers starting lineup presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer. 
Ghost Kinsler and Cabrera, your top three. Of course, Anthony acquired from the Blue Jays in the offseason. Had a really good spring. Victor is DHing today. JD Martinez in right. Cespedes in left. You've got Castellano, Sevilla, and Iglesias. And they are facing the right hander, Ricky Nolasco. And Nolasco last year performed for the Minnesota Twins. Did not have a good season. He lost 12 games. He only won six. It was the first year of a new four year contract, but. He got himself an outstanding physical shape in the offseason, and many people in Minnesota's organization say the ball is coming out of his hand a lot better than it did a season ago. Well, Alasco goes to work and goes fouls it back out of play. And Alasco's got a fastball slider, curveball, and used the splitter as his changeup, not overpowering. Fastball tops out at about 92 miles an hour. Alasco hails from Corona, California. Brings home the 0-1. Lifted in the air. Right center field. That'll be Schaefer cruising over. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Twins starting defense. It's brought to you by Tim Hortons. R.C. is Schaefer Hunter in the outfield. Bloop, Santana, Dozier, Mauer round out the infield. And Kurt Suzuki allowed three steals on opening day against the Tigers. He's putting down the fingers today for Nalaska. Bring up Ian Kinsler. Got himself a nice day on opening day. Had a couple of hits. Also made a nice defensive play. He is 5 for 12 career against Nolasco. And he looks at ball one. Kinsler had himself as good a spring as you can possibly have. He hit 400, knocked in 13 runs. And that led the Tigers, the RBI total that is, this spring. Two balls, no strikes on the Tigers second baseman. And there's a strike oh. two and one. Glasgow getting the start today. This would have been Urban Santana's spot. He was signed as an offseason free agent, but Santana suspended 80 games for PED. So that's a huge horse out of the rotation for Paul Molitor. And Santana will not make his first start for his new team until the beginning of July. He was expected to be the Twins number two starter behind Phil Hughes and uh, that contract he signed was the richest in Twins history and well he's not going to be able to uh, throw until July. 3-2 now on Kinsler. That in itself Rod has to be a little bit of a, a gut punch to this Twins team. No doubt because you only go as far as your starting rotation will take you and they've been very bad the last few years. Balls hit well to right field. Torrey is on the run. Still going back. He reaches up there, and Torrey Hunter with a nice running play. Torrey Hunter can still play outfield. He is not the Torrey Hunter that won nine gold gloves while patrolling center field, but he takes a great route on this ball and really runs it down, and this is the direct route that he took to get there, which allowed him to make that a grab at the 365 sign. Kinsler put a charge into that one the other way. And almost got it off the wall. Here is Miguel Cabrera. And Miggy looks at the ball inside. Cabrera did not have a hit on opening day. He led the league in doubles last year with 52 of them. And uh, Cabrera with 109 RBIs is certainly going to have himself another. Outstanding year offensively, seems to be healthy. Missed the early part of camp with the ankle surgery. Here's the 2 0 pitch. It's fouled back out of play. Huh. All in all, a really good spring training for Mickey. Only a couple of weeks is all he needed. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Two and one. And that one missed high. Home plate umpire Kerwin Danley flinched a little bit, but would not go up with the right hand. He did flinch, didn't he? Now in Alaska's 3 1 pitch. Here is ball four, and Cabrera gets himself a two-out walk. 
keep the inning alive for Victor Martinez. One for four on opening day for Victor. I was talking to Brad Osmus before the game today was meeting with the media and he said you know he was really concerned about the uh, rehab that Martinez was going through in spring camp and he really wasn't convinced that he was going to be ready for opening day until about four games remaining in camp. Victor really wasn't running oh. all that well Rod but uh, I guess toward the end of camp the final week he showed that he was good to go. He did in that uh, final tune up uh, game they played against the Tampa Bay Rays in St. Petersburg he was running a little bit better it was a game which he homered in and then he was moving OK on opening day here as well. Here's the 0 1 oh. and it's a little bit outside one ball one strike as they normally do they play Martinez to pull. And Torrey Hunter uh, in right field playing Martinez very deep. He is nearly on the warning track. Here's the 1 1. Bouncing ball, fair ball. Nice play by Maurer. Martinez didn't even get out of the box, thought it was a foul ball, and that's it. No runs of walk, one man left. thought this high chopper off the plate was foul nice play by Maurer it is a fair ball but usually on balls like this before the ball gets to first base the home plate umpire makes the call but Kerwin Danley didn't make the call and Victor thought it was foul as well no, 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 so here come the twins down the second Tory Hunter swings on the first pitch and pops it up Castellanos will have another chance. He's been busy, one gone. This bodes well for Sanchez very early in this game because the Minnesota Twins are very, very aggressive against him. A lot of times, Sanchez, because the stuff is so good, he gets so many swings and misses, he's got a very high pitch count by the time he gets to the sixth or seventh inning. Uh, but by the way, they're swinging the bats today. That would be Minnesota. Uh, Sanchez has a chance to go very deep in this contest. Well, he had just six pitches in the first, and now one more here in the second. Kenny Fargus will step in and he looks oh. at a strike. Fargus the DH today was one for three in the opener. He looks a lot like David Ortiz big poppy of the Boston Red Sox when standing in the batter's box from the left side. As a matter of fact you really couldn't tell oh. the two apart if you didn't know it. And the two have become pretty good friends as well uh, as the story goes in spring training. Uh, David Ortiz kind of took uh, Kenny Vargas under his wing. Invited him out to dinner, became good friends, and ironically, it was this Minnesota twin team that 
uh, Ortiz broke in with. Right. And then Ortiz obviously was let go by Minnesota and became a star in Boston. Looks just like him in the batter's box. And that's where the similarities end. <laughs> right now, at least. For sure. <laughs> no question about that. Ortiz has gone on to put together a uh, tremendous career. Borderline Hall of Fame career for David Ortiz. Oh. No one misses outside two and two. And really no need in throwing him a strike. He will chase a breaking ball if you bounce one up there. Very aggressive. And from both sides of the plate. Doesn't walk a lot. Three and two. Yeah, pretty close pitch, close take here for Vargas. Ooh, could have rung him up easily on that one. And down he goes, didn't matter. That change piece, that butterfly, that's exactly what Sanchez calls it. And that's what makes Sanchez so tough to hit is if the count's three and two, there are a lot of guys that are looking for a fastball, but he turns his back ever so slightly, and then he gives you really good arm speed, but... By the way, he's holding this changeup. Obviously, the speed decreases 10 miles an hour, and what a pitch. Here is Trevor Plouffe with the bases empty. Plouffe hitless in the opener on Monday, 0 for 3. Good power, had uh, 14 homers last year, drove in 80. He has homered in his career against Sanchez. The 1-0 is a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. And Trevor has the kind of pop in his bat where he can hit 15, 20, 25 a year. But he gave up some of that power last year, drove in more runs because he started using right field a little bit more effectively. Oh. Target field is not known as a ballpark that is uh, conducive to hitting home runs, but Plouffe is tied for the all-time lead in that ballpark with 35 homers. Already. And he and uh, Josh Willingham. Here's the 2 1. Even the count now, 2 and 2 on Trevor Plouffe. Waiting on deck, Oswaldo Arcia. Sanchez in search of his second consecutive 1 2 3 inning. And he got it. Strike three called. Second strike out of the game for Sanchez. J.D. Martinez will lead off the bottom of the second. He homered his first at bat on Monday. As we go to the bottom of the second here at Comerica. And for the Tigers, it'll be J.D. Martinez, Ioannis Cespedes, and Nick Castellanos. 
Ricky Nolasco walked to batter in the first. No damage done though. JD stands in. And Martinez looks at ball one. Good spring this year for JD. Hit five homers down in Lakeland. Hit over 300. Here's the 1 0. That breaks oh. in for a strike. One ball and one strike. Nice uh, slow breaking ball there thrown by Nolasco at 80 miles an hour. And had JD Martinez who's looking for a fastball. A little bit on that front leg. One and two. Nolasco pitched uh, pretty well against the Tigers last year in September. He spent some time on the disabled list with a bad elbow. Once he came back, he pitched much better than he pitched the first part of the season. He spotted his fastball in the couple of starts he had against Detroit. Threw some slow breaking balls that had the Tigers off balance. The slow bender that is fouled off. And here's uh, some of what I was talking about at what he threw. Kind of showed him the fastball up in the strike zone on occasion. They were chasing that. And then when he got him looking for that fastball up, he just went downstairs with a mixture of breaking balls and fork balls. And he was able to pitch very well against Detroit. Slow roller toward third. Kloop on the charge. And Martinez down by a step. One gone here in the Tigers seconds. By the way, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game where you will select, we will select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by the two for five dollars classic quarter pounder with cheese. That's coming up on Tigers Live post game. Tigers player of the game. Here is Cespedes. A start for Ioannis on Monday. Triple double. Great catch. And he'll stand in here with one out, nobody on. In there oh. for strike one. He's also worn out Minnesota Twins pitching. 379 career average against the Minnesota pitching. Oh. 0 and 2. And Alaska really likes that slow curveball here today and really leaving spring training. The hitters from a timing standpoint, they have no problem hitting fastballs, but it's the breaking balls and guys that have really good breaking balls. Those guys tend to have pretty good aprils. Hitters are still searching for their timing against off speed pitches. Cespedes laying off the fastball away. Ioannis, 22 home runs last year. And the one two. That one's bending outside. Two balls, two strikes. Cespedes also had a really good spring. 11 RBIs for the Tigers down in Lakeland. Swing and a foul tip into the glove. And yeah, Menards brings you the big money encounter and it's regarding the slider that uh, Richie Ricky and Alaska features last four seasons. Take a look at the slider that middle column the batting average continues to go up for that particular pitch 301 last year in 702 sliders that he threw. So that slider hasn't been good early in his career. It wasn't that good last year for Ricky. A high fly ball to center field off the bat of Castellanos. Routine play for Schaefer. And Alasco has himself an easy one, two, three second.
Brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. When it's time, come to Comerica. By Ram Trucks, Gus, Glory, Ram. And by Fresh Express, blends and kits consistently, deliciously fresh. Back here at Comerica to the third inning we go. Oswaldo Arcia looks at ball one low. It'll be Arcia, Suzuki, Schaefer, six up, six down versus Anibal Sanchez so far. Arcia, great power, 20 homers last year. Looks at a ball high, 2-0. Oh. And the first two pitches to Arcia by design, they wanted to see if he would expand his strike zone. He wasn't doing so. Now uh, Sanchez forced him coming over the heart of the ditch. Shift is on defensively against Arcia. They play him to pull severely, and that was a really nice pitch there from Sanchez. 2 0, -oh, you're dialed and in for the fastball, and he pulled the string on him at 84 miles an hour. That's the butterfly changeup, and boy, what a dandy. Let's say this, Rob. The cold weather here today does not a, a seem to be affecting the stuff of Sanchez early on. Not at all. Breaking ball's got some bite on him. He's thrown a curveball or two. That changeup, of course, that comes out of his hand nicely, and he's been able to spot that four seam fastball as well. Did you bring your blanket today? I did not bring a blanket, but I brought a jacket. That's drilled to center field, a base hit. Lead off single for the Twins. Time for a game break now to the studio we go in Mickey York. <laughs> Thanks, Mick. You think Mickey's got his banky back in the studio? <laughs> it's like, good. It's nice and warm in there. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Yeah, it's nice and comfy in, in the studio. That is the first base runner of the game for the Twins, the single by Arcia. Suzuki looks at strike oh. one. The veteran catcher who did some marvelous work last year for the Twins. In fact, he did so well. They signed him to a two-year extension last July. He made an all-star team as well, and that game was played at Target Field in Minneapolis. The 0-1. Suzuki has had a lot of time with the uh, Oakland Athletics, also played with Washington and the Minnesota Twins. And the ball looking for a ground ball here, and he could get that if he and buries his change up or his breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone and gets Suzuki uh, out on his front foot. It sails low two and one. Sanchez last year was limited to just 22 starts for the Tigers. He had a couple of separate stints on the disabled list a lacerated finger in May and the pec strain in August. Runner back. That's a nice throw over there by Anibal Sanchez, just in case. You know, the rookie manager, Paul Molitor, uh, has a hit and run on with this combination of Arcia and Suzuki. There's Paul all bundled up. Boy, could he hit. There goes the runner. It's in the air to left center field. Ghost coming over, and so is Cespedes, who cuts in front of the center fielder. That is a nice job by Anibal Sanchez. He had an idea that possibly the hit and run would be on because RC is not a base dealer at first base, so he simply threw something up in the strike zone, and Suzuki was not able to get on the top half of the baseball, which would allow him to hit a ground ball. It's a well located fastball at the top of the strike zone. Here's Jordan Schaefer now. Schaefer last year with Atlanta and Minnesota. Of course, the uh, Twins picked him up off the waiver wire. Castellanos about 10 steps in front of the bag at third base. Ball one to Schaefer. They've got Schaefer and Shane Robinson splitting time out in center field. They were hopeful that Aaron Hicks would be their guy, but he just to this point has not panned out as far as a major league player. But they're all keeping the uh, seat warm for Byron Buxton. Yeah, they say that uh, once he 
uh, gets to the big leagues. He's going to be in center field for a number of years. Bouncing ball to second. Kinsler to second. That's all we'll get. Fielder's choice. Schaefer aboard at first base with two outs. Well, here's where Sanchez is going to have to make sure that he keeps Schaefer at first base. Schaefer can run. He can steal a base. And that's one of the areas where Sanchez struggles. He doesn't do a great job at shutting down the opposition's running game. But you want to keep him. That would be Schaefer out of scoring position. Here's Danny Santana now. They got him to pop up to start the game. Which makes Santana 0 for 5 to start the year. <laughs> Nothing doing there. 1 and 0 the count. A pitch out uh, given to Avila there. And by Brad Osmus. Sanchez in his career against the Twins, a 2.6 ERA. He's made nine starts over the years against Minnesota, 10 total appearances. Sanchez will keep a very close eye on Schaefer with the ability to run. There you go. He's at about 79% in his career. Too low. Santana went into camp with uh, Escobar as the two leading candidates to play the shortstop position. Santana played center field last year for the most part, but he pretty much won that job this spring. Ooh, that one was close. You can already see here in the very first start of the year for Sanchez, it's a conscious effort of him to do a little bit better job with shutting down the opposition's running game. You wonder if there's any real way of improving somebody's move. We've talked over the years about Max Scherzer holding the baseball more as a way of holding the base runners, but physically, is there anything you can do? I think what you just said uh, would bode very well for Sanchez. If he held the ball a little bit more often and buried his times in his delivery toward home plate, he probably could have more effect at shutting down the running game as we watched Max Scherzer get better at it. Foul tip into the glove of Vila, two and two. And Schaefer more than likely will be on the move. Here one, they might be anticipating another breaking ball. Uh, from Anibal Sanchez and even if he does get thrown out they still have their leadoff hitter leading off uh, the top half of the fourth inning. Avila meanwhile was one of the better catchers in the American League at throwing base runners out last year. And there he goes. Strike three call didn't matter. Santana took it looking third strikeout for Sanchez. Alex Avila will get it started in the bottom of the third. He homered on opening day.
bring the kids to Comerica Park, see the Tigers battle the Twins tomorrow afternoon. It is a 108 start. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER. Or check it out online at tigers.com. Either way. A lot of kids out at the ballpark today enjoying Tigers baseball. All bundled up. Hot dogs still taste good no matter what the temperature is outside. That's right. Mustard, though, right? <laughs> I do, I do mustard. Yeah, mustard, no ketchup. I do a little ketchup. Oh, too. you do? I, I said it. <laughs> you admitted it. I did. Here's Avila to get it started here in the third. And that is in there for a strike on one. And you can see that uh, Nolasco does have much better movement on his two seam fastball. It goes anywhere from 86 to 90 miles an hour, but he's got some nice tilt on that pitch. He worked out very hard in the offseason. Worked out with John Carlos Stanton of the Miami Marlins partner. How about that? Well, that would be a good workout partner. There's no doubt about that. In fact, uh, apparently they got a couple of different trainers. They uh, they got a, a chef to make their meals for them. Now that makes it a little easy. Oh, no doubt. And, and Alaska said that, you know, for about six weeks, we ate no junk at all. We got in great shape. They were walking the sands in Manhattan Beach. Here's the one one. And that itself is a great workout. I remember uh, you know, the Molina brothers, Benji and, and Yadier and Jose, the great catchers. That's what they would do. They're from Puerto Rico, and they say that running on the beach is really a great way to strengthen your legs. And that's exactly what Nolasco said. He says he has his legs underneath him this year, and he's in better shape now than he's ever been in his life. Here's the 2-1. Two, 2-2 on two, two the view. Well, this defensive alignment against Alex is something he's going to see probably from every single team this year. I mean, they've got that second baseman in the short right field. They've given up the entire left side of the infield. I think he will take advantage of this shift as well. He had a home run opening day, the opposite field. We saw him bunt down the third baseline in spring training. And I think you're going to see a lot of left-handers try to beat the shift uh, that way by bunting on occasion and then giving themselves up. Uh, hitting the ball the other way. That's the only way they're going to change against you if you make some kind of an adjustment. Three and two now on Alex with Iglesias waiting on deck. And time call now as Avila steps out. Two run shot in the opener. He finished two out of three. Alex hopeful of staying healthy this year. Here's the three two. And he checked it. Ball four. They want the appeal. Country Joe said he held up. <laughs> Tigers have the leadoff man aboard. That'll be the second walk of the ball game now for Nolasco. Here is Iglesias who had himself a nice opening day and you know Jose kind of struggled this spring and people were a little bit concerned but he was pretty much right playing himself back into shape. He sure was. He took a lot of at bats on the minor league side trying to get his eye back trying to get his timing back. I had a conversation with Jose about I don't know maybe four or five days before the ending of spring training and I said really the hits don't matter for you down here as long as you're healthy and 100 percent. Uh, to go when you leave and go north. That's exactly what the ball club wants. They know you're going to hit. Back to monitor. Want to know? Well, Brad has himself in a nice uh, count to put a hit and run on. Should he choose to do so with Iglesias? Iglesias can really handle the bat. You also give Avila a head start, which would help you possibly stay out of a double play. And kind of turn that lineup over so you can get to the guys that do the damage and driving in runs, and that would be Kinsler, Mickey, and Victor. So Alaska will turn and throw back, keeping an eye on Avila. Showing bunt and it missed outside 2 and 0. Nolasco was the Twins opening day starter last year. He signed a four year contract before the beginning of last season. 
but it was not a season for him to remember. He was six and twelve. His ERA was five three eight. A career worst. That's oh. in there for a strike. That five three eight earned run average last year turned in by Nalasco was the highest earned run average of any pitcher in Major League Baseball with 150 or more innings pitched. Well, that's one of the big reasons why they need him to turn things around this year because their staff as a whole had an ERA of about four and a half, which was the highest in the American League. And then when you add in the fact that Urban Santana, who they signed to a four year contract, is now serving a suspension and for PD. Drilled toward left field. And that one is going to get down and roll to the wall. Avila coming to third base. They're going to stop in there. And Jose Iglesias with a double. It's a nice job by Iglesias. A really patient at bat. And he got himself in a really nice fastball friendly count. And he got himself an 89. A mile per hour fastball that didn't really move all that much from Nolasco. And he hit it very deep to left field over the head of Arcia, who was playing him very shallow. That'll be the first really good scoring opportunity of the day for the Tigers. Well, they've got the top of the lineup coming up, Anthony Ghost. Yeah, ground ball will get it done. Paul Molitor, manager of the Minnesota Twins, conceding the run on the ground. Goes slaps it foul back out of play. I thought it was a real nice gesture by uh, Brad Ausmus, and I have to uh, uh, tell you, I was kind of shocked that Rajay Davis was the starting center fielder on opening day, and it was not Anthony Ghost, who pretty much played against all the right-handers in spring training. Brad felt like. Uh, because of what Rajay did last year, he deserved to play in front of these fans on opening day. And honestly, I didn't disagree with him. I thought it was a nice move as well. And, and the one oh. thing Brad did is he said, you know, look, we're, I'm going to talk to these two guys all season long. And obviously, Ghost will see the majority of the time against righties and Rajay against lefties. But uh, it was a nice move to give Davis uh, kind of a, a thank you for his really good season last year. I think they'll be a good tandem. Ghost looks at the ball inside. No, I think they'll do fine out there. But it's re a really good opportunity now for Anthony Ghost. He never really found any traction with the Toronto Blue Jays. But he's going to find himself in a position here to play on most nights. The one two. Now that foul. Ghost this spring hit 299. He stole six bases. And this is a guy that, when he was in the minor leagues, was a very prolific stolen base guy. In fact, twice over 70 in a season. Got a couple of ducks on the pond right now. Avila third, Iglesias hit second. And did he go? Did not, says Joe West. Two balls, two strikes. And goes, hits it in the air toward the left. Arcia measuring it, charging it. And the runners have to hold, not deep enough to score the run. It is the first out of the inning. Bring up Kinsler. Kinsler hit a ball deep his first time up that Torrey Hunter ran down in right center field. It was a nice running catch. But what I tell you what, Ian was seeing the ball really well all spring long and apparently at the start of the season as well. On opening day, Kinsler had a couple of hits.
spring training rock can be tricky like that can I mean if you get off to a good start once you get toward the end of spring you want to keep that good feeling going and keep that swing going especially for the veteran players I mean because many of those guys are working on certain things as Kinsler was toward the tail end of spring training he was working on driving the ball the opposite way which he was very successful at doing so he'd like to do more of that this year but JD Martinez also said that uh, he was ready to go uh, down in Lakeland 10 days before they really broke camp and Miguel Cabrera really he and Victor only had two weeks of spring training so the hitters don't need nearly the time that the pitchers do down in spring. Here's the 1 1. Tried to thread the outside corner couldn't do it two balls and one strike. This Marine made some of his money last year, 322 with men in scoring position. And the 2 1. Now 3 and 1. And it's not going to get a whole lot easier for Nolasco with Cabrera than Martinez and Martinez lurking. Which means if you're Ian Kinsler, you know you're going to get a really good pitch to hit here, and more than likely it's going to be a fastball. It's going to be about 89 miles an hour. And after a couple of pretty snappy innings, Nolasco now has thrown 20 pitches in this third inning. His pace has really slowed down as well with the runners on base. All the way three and two. Thing that Nolasco has thrown to Kinsler in this particular at bat has been away from him. That last pitch he swung at, really the closest one to the strike zone. Self line drive to center field, gonna drop, base hit. One run will score. Iglesias coming around and Kinsler gets it done again. It's 2 0 Detroit. Well, he came inside with a breaking ball that didn't do a whole lot. You could see Suzuki wanted the ball down and away, but the breaking ball stayed up and in, and Kinsler was able to fight it off. And what a jump and by Jose Iglesias from second base. He knew as soon as that ball left Kinsler's bat that it was not going to be caught by Schaefer, uh, their center fielder. Yeah, he really made it easy on Dave Clark to send him home. And now the Tigers have a couple of runs here in the third as Cabrera stands in. Or took a step towards oh. second, then retreated. Strike one on Cabrera. Miggy had a base on balls in his first at bat. One ball, one strike. Tigers doing a nice job of laying off the borderline pitches that Nolasco continues to throw up there at them. He's thrown a total of 51 in this game. 28 strikes, 23 balls. Yeah, that ratio not nearly where you want it to be. Cabrero is 0 for 4 on opening day, has a walk today. Kinsler last year stole 15. To go with his good power numbers and the good RBI numbers, he knocked in 92. This one in the air toward right field, slicing the foul ground. Torrey runs out of room. One and two on Cabrera. So Nolasco now has thrown 25 in this inning. Looks 
Ian Kinsler has stolen 187 bases in his major league career of 233 attempts. Pretty good percentage, 80%. Kinsler's first number of years in the big leagues, he was in Texas with the Rangers. Gary Pettis handled the base runners there. Gary Pettis had tremendous base running instincts. And now it's Omar Vizquel, the first base coach, who pretty much helps out the base runner. Ooh, another pitch borderline that Cabrera takes two and two. Kinsler in his days with Texas still over 30 a couple of times. He's a 30 30 guy, twice, I believe. Yeah, you're right. Here's Martinez waiting on deck. Runner goes on 2 2, grounded third, out of the reach at Trevor Plouffe in the left. Kinsler on his way to third, Dave Clark waves him in. He will score, and Miguel Cabrera has an RBI double. Three nothing Tigers. Well, Nelasco finally got one of those breaking balls up in an area where Miggy could reach it. You can see that Miggy, with the front side of his body, was out in front of this particular pitch, but he kept his hands back. Poof was playing off the line. He was not able to knock it down. And Kinsler, with his speed, was on the move when the pitch was delivered, able to score no problem. Tigers, after a couple of scoreless innings, put together three hits and a walk in this frame. They've gotten to Nolasco, still only one out. First RBI of the season for Cabrera. Kinsler is knocked in two. And here is Victor Martinez. Over for one with a ground ball. First base open. We'll walk him here in the third. We'll draw the ire of the crowd. Meanwhile, JD Martinez is lurking on deck saying, all right. It's the right move and for the Minnesota Twins. You play for two. Instead of allowing Victor to hit, Victor drove in over 100 runs last year. You play for the double play ball. And so Martinez will get his intentional walk. Hey, Saturday, Major League Baseball returns to Fox Sports 1 with a doubleheader as the Red Sox take on the Yankees in the Bronx, followed by a playoff rematch. The Royals battle Mike Trout and the Angels. Coverage begins Saturday, April 11th at 1230 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. So here is J.D. now with two on and one out. For one with the ground ball for Martinez and Alaska trying to get another one of those right now. Instead, he drives into the air to left field. Arcia is on the move. And he'll run it down to the gap. Two gone with the runners holding. That'll bring up Cespedes. Cespedes uh, made his debut right here at Comerica Park just a couple of days ago. It was opening day. David Price did his work on the mound, but Cespedes, he did his with the bat. Doubled, he tripled, and then a really nice base running play where a shallow line drive to center field. He got back to tag up and scored, and he stole the home run away from Kurt Suzuki. He did it all, didn't he? He did everything you could ask. It was a great debut for Cespedes. And Ioannis looks at a strike going oh. one. A lengthy, lengthy inning now for Nolasco. He's trying to limit the damage here by getting Cespedes. There you go. He's up to 60, and you see the ratio not all that good. Foul tip. But facing this Tigers offense can do that to you. It really doesn't have too many pit stops where you can relax. Oh, 
0 and 2 on Juanes. He's the eighth man to bat in the inning. And a foul tip into the glove for strike three. Nope, foul ball they're saying. Suzuki and the Twins were walking off the field, but hold on, says Kerwin Danton. That's a nice sail job there by their catcher, Kurt Suzuki, but the first base umpire, Lance Barksdale, he saw it all the way. Yeah, clearly there. You know what they say. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> I mean, you might as well give it a shot. Why not? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And again, the 0-2. Slow tap toward third base. Plouffe going to barehand it. No play. Infield hit. They are loaded up. So that's going to bring up Castellanos now, the ninth man to bat in the inning, and he's got himself a glorious opportunity here in the third. Fly out his first time up. And one of the things that I notice about uh, Castellanos in his rookie year, and he had a nice rookie season, is that when runners were in scoring position, if he did get that first pitch fastball, he was swinging early and he was swinging off. See if Castellanos can tack on a few more here. Three nothing Detroit. Bouncing ball foul. Avila got this inning started with a walk and then Iglesias doubled. That got the party started for the Tigers. Kinsler's knocked in a pair. And now a chance here to bust this one open a little bit early. Swing and a miss. Castellanos trying to hold his swing but couldn't do it. 0 and 2. Well, they've got some action in the bullpen to the Twins. Stopper warming up the right-hander. He was warming up on opening day but did not pitch in the game. He's not still warming up from opening day, but he was out there on Monday as well. The 0 2. Bouncing in 1 2. Well, this is one of those innings where you start to get a little bit concerned for your starting pitcher. The next one that the Lasco throws will be his 40th of the inning, and when it reaches those heights, you start to get concerned a bit. Yet Nolasco still has an opportunity to get out of the city with only three runs in. And the one two. Swing and a miss to strike him out. Tigers bat around. They scored three times. They had a couple of big hits here in the third. Ian Kinsler drives in a couple with a base hit. And a double from Miggy. 3 nothing Detroit.
Anibal Sanchez on top of his game today. A lot of the fastballs he's throwing up for the strike zone by design. A lot of the Minnesota Twins hitters are very aggressive. They can't get on top of it. They're simply popping it up. And then once he starts to get them looking for that number one, that would be the heater. He just simply pulls the string with some breaking balls and some change-ups. But he's been top, top of his game so far today. In the meantime, his teammates have supplied him with three runs to work with now as we go to the fourth inning. It'll be Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer, Torrey Hunter. Two, three, and four for the Minnesota Twins. And Dozier looks oh. at a strike. Dozier popped up and is only at bat. Now one for five to start the year. A little bit outside, one and two. They haven't thrown Dozier a pitch inside in the first two games of the year. Really good power to left field. Not a lot of power the opposite way. Here's the one two pitch. Bouncing ball to short. Iglesias. And Dozier is out. One gone. Well, Sanchez is pitching today. It would have been Verlander's start. JV told us earlier this morning about the progress of his tricep injury. And some days it's a little cranky, but um, you know, definitely a lot better than it was a few days ago or, or a week ago. Um, so you know, it's definitely trending in the right direction. It's obviously taking longer than I would like, um, but uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you can't really uh, speed up the process. So you just gotta wait till you're ready. And uh, you know, like I said, if this was September, it might be a different story. It might be some uh, pitching through some stuff right now. But uh, talking with the coaching staff, they don't want me to do that right now. So Verlander was placed on the DL today and uh, Brad Ausmus before today's game made it extremely clear that he will not pitch until he's 100%. Oh. There's just no reason to take any chance. Not in the month of April. It's still real cold outside. You want to make sure that uh, if you err on any side, it's on the side of caution uh, with Justin Verlander. Joe Maurer the batter. He drives one into right base hit. Well, here is the move that uh, corresponds to Verlander going on the disabled list. Kyle Lobstein was recalled, and he'll make the start. Uh, here are the numbers uh, last year after his recall. Six starts for Lobstein, 4.35 ERA. He will pitch on uh, Sunday against the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland, and it bodes well to have a left-handed pitcher go up against Cleveland. Cleveland has a lot of left-handers in their batting order. They've got Moss, they've got Brent, they've got Chisholm Hall. And then you could turn a guy around like you know, the very talented first base. And Dallas Keuchel, a lefty, shut out the Indians on the opening day in Houston. His stuff was danced. Hunter the batter with one on, one out. Broken bat. It'll go foul, though. In the proverbial kitchen of Torrey Hunter. To break the bat. Had a nice conversation with uh, Tory Hunter this morning. He really talked about the two years he was able to spend in the Tiger Whites and playing for the Detroit Tigers. He really enjoyed himself. And the fans enjoyed Hunter and the way uh, he played the game here. Had a couple of really nice years batting right in front of Miguel Cabrera. Got a lot of good pitches to hit. I think I'd probably enjoy that too, right? Probably not a better job in baseball. Here's the 02. Chase. Torrey spent 11 seasons with the Minnesota Twins coming up in their organization. And he went to the Angels for a spell and, of course, the Tigers. Seven gold gloves, two All Star games. High again, two and two. He has a total of nine gold gloves. He won a couple with the Angels in his first two years out there. And he's done a couple of fastballs up in the strike zone. Torrey, no doubt, may be looking for the fastball, maybe a good breaking ball. And we'll get you that six four three double play. Get you out of this inning. It's fall away. One of the things that Torrey did very well in his final couple of years in Anaheim and then his two years here uh, with the Tigers, which allowed his batting average to go way up, he really started driving the ball the other way. 
uh, when Torrey first came up as a youngster, he was a dead pool hitter who really looked to do damage to the pool field all the time. But he kind of changed. He made some adjustments. He'll get back out of play as well. Well, Torrey's first couple of years in the major leagues coincided with the end of Kirby Puckett's career. Puckett was on the downside or the, the end of his career, and Kirby really took Torrey under his wing. And Torrey has talked over and over about what Kirby meant to him, and now Torrey's kind of paying that forward to the youngsters, so like Byron Buxton and Aaron Hicks. Helping them along as they try and get to the big leagues. It's kind of a cycle. This goes on and on. Drill toward left field, hooking though. Wow. And the ball better get that breaking ball down. Nice grab out there. Barehanded. He had the glove with him. Okay. Look at the sun, man. Give that up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Very nice. A little crumb snatchers. They want everything, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> That's one of my favorite terms, crumb <laughs> snatchers. Yeah, the high five to boot. Little man keeping score and everything. That's that's good to see. He's waiting for the next one. Two two on Tory. Foul tip strike three. Hunter is gone. It's number four now for Sanchez. And breaking ball at 78 miles an hour up in the strike zone. Torrey just swung right through it. There's Kenny Vargas. Strikeout victim back in the second. Tigers three runs on four hits this afternoon. No runs, two hits for Minnesota. Twins have had just a couple of singles against Sanchez. That's it. And that's lofted in the air to shallow center with Iglesias backpedaling to end the inning. No runs and a hit. One man left. Here comes the bottom of the fourth. In the last half inning in the bottom half of the third, a hanging breaking ball to Kinsler with a couple of runners aboard. He drove both of those in. That would be Avila and Iglesias. And then Miggy also got a breaking ball with Kinsler standing on second base, and he was able to drive in Ian Kinsler with his first RBI of the year. Yeah, the unmistakable smile of Miguel Cabrera. He'll do a lot more of that this year. Yeah, Jim Liebman calls it the best smile in baseball. 
We'll see now if the Tigers can add to their three nothing lead. Same guy leads it off here in the fourth. Avila led off the third with a walk. And that got the party started for Detroit. It's been a good start to the year for Avila at the dish. He was two for three in the open. And he has scored a run here this afternoon. Brad was asked before the game today when James McCann might be able to uh, fit in and, and certainly when we get to Cleveland the Tigers will see a left-hander. That's when McCann will get his first start. And that is I believe on Saturday against House of the Indians. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Two balls, one strike. Well, Nolasco had that long, laborious third inning. He hit the 40 plateau and total pitches in that frame. And because of that, it really is throwing his pitch count out of whack. Bounce all the way to the backstop. What was that word you just used? L laborious. It was early for them big words, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, only two days in. Come on, man. We had all spring training to get ready. Laborious. Laborious. Three balls, one strike. He labored, is basically what I said. Oh, that's layman's turn. <laughs> I like that. The 3 1 offering. And there's another walk for Avila. It's his second of the game. And the fourth now for Alaska. Hey, by the way, Sunday, April 19th, the Tigers take on the Chicago White Sox. Much improved ball club. That'll be a 108 start. It's kids opening day. All kids 14 and under receive a free Tigers team baseball card set. 866-66-TIGER or Tigers.com. Yeah, the one thing that uh, Neil Allen, the new pitching coach of the Minnesota Twins, was hoping that Nalasco would do a better job of this year, which he didn't do last year, and that would be attacking the hitters in the first or second pitch. He's not doing so. Therefore, Tigers are finding themselves in some really nice or friendly fastball counts. And it's not that he's throwing them fastballs, but some guys even have the luxury of sitting on a breaking ball when you're ahead in the count because Nolasco's thrown so many breaking balls today. Iglesias had a double and a run scored in the third. Another bender that slides in for a strike. 1-1. One, one. Alaska, the thought was, would have a lot less pressure on it this year with the emergence of Phil Hughes and the, the season he had last year and the signing of Santana. But now Santana's out with the suspension. And Alaska oh. had himself some success over in the National League with the Marlins and Dodgers. He and today's starter, Anibal Sanchez, were teammates for a number of years in South Florida. Last goes ahead now, one and two on Iglesias. He sends a ground ball to third base on the charge. Plouffe. And the one hop the first baseman, everybody is safe. Iglesias gets out of the batter's box in a hurry and gets tons of infield singles. He had 35 infield singles just a couple of years ago, but he's reaching for this ball, which means he's pretty much already on his way down the first baseline that ball's right off the carpet and there's really no play for the first third baseman Trevor Plouffe. Was he golfing there or was he batting? He went down and got that one that he did. Another infield hit for Mr. Iglesias. How about the production at the bottom of the lineup? Getting it done. Monday, they were eight for nine, and today, two for two. Oh, eight, nine here. I'm sorry. They were four for six on Monday. And uh, two for two, so a whole lot of production. And uh, we've talked about the depth of this Tigers lineup. Maybe we should start paying attention to what Mr. Iglesias can bring to the bottom of the order. Here's Anthony Ghost. He'll shoot one to right field, base hit. Here's Avila coming to third. He'll score. Ball gets by Torrey Hunter and goes to the wall. This will get another run in. Ghost is off to the races and he is in safely at third. Two more runs in. Five nothing Detroit. 
Ghost gets his first hit as a Tiger. It's a fastball in the 1-0 count. That's down. He likes the ball down. He hits the ball right over Dozier's head. Torrey Hunter got over, but not able to bend over and knock it down. And once it gets past Hunter, with the speed that Anthony Ghost has, it's a built-in triple. Boy, can he really run. Well, David Price enjoying this one from the bench today. He likes what's going on, and that's going to be it for an Alaska. They will go to the bullpen, and as the Twins go to the pen, it's a wall side windows pitching change. Tripled in a pair to extend the Tigers lead now to five to nothing and it's going to be it for Nolasco. He will be relieved by Tim Stoffer. and Stoffer making his first appearance of the year spent the previous nine seasons with the San Diego Padres pitched in 44 games last year for San Diego. That's a new improved team out Ooh. west San Diego Padres team. How about that deal they pulled off a couple of days ago getting Craig Kimbrough they, from the Atlanta Braves. They just keep adding pieces and they're major pieces oh. too. Infield is in now for Minnesota. Can't afford to give up too many more. And so the batter is Ian Kinsler. Still nobody out. Here's a oh. strike called 0 and 2 on Ian. Kinsler had a two run single in the three run third. Both of the Tigers scoring innings began with a walk to Avila. Yanked foul. With a breaking ball up and he had punished it and foul. Stoffer is a native of Portland, Maine, lives in San Diego. He's 32 years old. Really had a couple of pretty good seasons with the Padres each of the last two years. Appearing out of their bullpen. Breaking ball here to center field. That's going to get down. Base hit. And it gets by the center fielder, Schaefer. Now Kinsler is on his way to third. And they're going to try and score him. Nope, they put the brakes on late. Kinsler skidding around third, but he'll step there. 6 0 Detroit. Dave Clark initially gave him the go ahead side, but then threw up the late stop sign. Tigers are getting a ton of breaking balls to hit here today, and they haven't missed any of them. You wonder at some point in time, uh, will the Minnesota Twins pitchers kind of change their game plan? Kinsler, once he sees this ball get past a uh, Schaefer in center field, he turns on the Jets, and then it was Dave Clark over at third base who was aggressively waving him home. I'm with you, partner. I thought he was going to try to score him too. And this looked kind of dangerous Ooh, right there. Foot oh. hit the bag, but it's six nothing Detroit. They have ruled that a single and an E8 plus an RBI. The 
Cabrera the bat. Look out, up and in. One ball, one strike. Fans don't like it. If I was the fans, I wouldn't like it either. And when you start going up and in on the big fella, you're messing with the Tigers championship. Yeah, you are. Mickey's probably not too crazy about it either. Pulled foul on third base side. And Paul Molitor has his infield playing, not necessarily in at the cut of the grass, but they're playing at a depth. At will they believe that Ian Kinsler will not try to score on a ground ball? How would you like to be one of these infielders playing on the cut of the grass with Cabrera? Up there? Not fun. Missed it outside. Two and two. Victor Martinez waiting on deck. Still nobody out here in the fourth. Oh, and a foul ball. Look out. Vizquel hits the deck at first base. Omar's uh, heart rate is getting back to normal now. Slow tap foul with third base. Cabrera got his first RBI of the season via a double in his last at bat. He's also walked in this game. Six runs on seven Tigers hits. Way outside, 3 2. Part of the problem the Twins had last year, Rod, and that they just did not get any length out of their starters. Their bullpen threw more innings than any team they had. And if the guys don't continue to uh, give Paul Mahler to that length that he needs, this bullpen will tire before they get to July. Bouncing ball to the shortstop. Backhanded there is Santana to save the run. One gone. And more than likely, Victor will receive his second intentional free pass of the game. Victor led the majors last year in 28 free passes, and they've already walked him once here today. You are correct, sir. Here comes the intentional pass. This is what happens when you put up MVP type numbers, which is what Martinez did last year. Well, JD Martinez just needs to relax and know that he's going to have to prove that last year was absolutely no fluke. As good a year as JD Martinez had, teams will still pitch around Victor to get to him. Even this early in the season, coming off the knee surgery, in which Martinez may not be as Normally as locked in as he would be. They're not going to mess with him. So his second consecutive intentional walk. 28th in the major leagues. Oh, here is J.D. Martinez to try and make him pay. J.D. flied out after the intentional walk to Martinez in the third. Slow 1 0. -oh. Oh. Field still about halfway for the Minnesota Twins, not all the way in. And some room to the right side. Two and one on JD. J. 
JD was money down the stretch last year for the Tigers at 354. In the oh. month of September. He also, 13 of his home runs last year were hit from the seventh inning and beyond. So, I mean, he hit some home runs last year that came in money time, and which kind of added to uh, the special season he had. Stoffer ready with a 2 2. And he pulls it right at the third baseman, Kluf. Two gone. Bring up Cespedes. Cespedes is the eighth batter in this inning. The Tigers hit a round in the third. Ioannis had an infield hit in his last at bat. Way outside, gets away from Suzuki. This will score another run. A wild pitch, and Kinsler comes in to score. Suzuki, their catcher, really had no chance at blocking uh, this breaking ball thrown by Stauffer. No chance whatsoever. Getting kind of ugly for the Twins now, seven to nothing. Kinsler scores his second run of the day. Cespedes one for two this afternoon. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes on Ioannis. Stoffer's first year in the major leagues was 2005 with San Diego. There's a bouncing ball to second. It'll be routine for Dozier. And that is that. Tigers added their lead though. 7 0 score. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Time. Tire price period. Bell Tire. Myers save big with M Perks from Myers. Sign up at mperks.com. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Well, they're all bundled up here at the ballpark today, but having a good time nonetheless. The Tigers offense putting a hurting on the Twins so far. They lead seven to nothing. A blanketed crowd here this afternoon. 
Anibal Sanchez goes back to work. And the fifth inning is underway. It's a strike called on Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe, then Arcia, and then Kurt Suzuki. Lifted in the air. Shallow right center field ghosts to make the play. Todd Alfarar, T Mobile game changer. And uh, well, go back to uh, opening day. You've got David Price against the Twins. Uh, these numbers, Rod, well, pretty special. Well, he was nearly first pitch strike on most of the Minnesota Twins on Monday afternoon. You could tell that he wanted to finish the game. He was only able to allow. Uh, last eight and two thirds, which was spectacular. No runs. He did not walk a batter. And he just looked like he's the guy that's in that Cy Young conversation, but he's in that Cy Young conversation at the beginning of every year. Price was so efficient. A lot of first pitch strikes. Really didn't need many breaking balls. Didn't need a whole lot of change ups. He was just able to spot that four seam fastball and that cutter all over the strike zone. Garcia pops it up and Avila makes the play two gone if you missed uh, David Price on Monday Here's a little bit of uh, the body of work uh, that he was able to turn in. He was sensational And he seemed to be pitching at a good pace as well, and I guess when you're getting guys out that establishes a pace but He's just uh, mowing him down. He is the definition of a true ace Game took about two and a half hours to play, and uh, the Tigers made quick work of the Twins on opening day. Here is Kurt Suzuki with two outs. And Sanchez oh. hits the strike zone 0 and 1. And about Sanchez not racking up as many strikeouts as he normally does, therefore, uh, his pitch count is in really nice shape. Just a little bit outside to Suzuki. Heard flat out his first time up. Sanchez had a six pitch first inning and really hasn't been uh, threatened or worked hard at all in this game. There's a strike, one and two. Only two hits allowed, both singles. Maurer has a single, Arcia has a single, and here they are by, uh, by inning. No stress at all so far today for. Anibal Sanchez, just the way you like it. Whistled back out of play. This was a Twins team that won 10 of the 19 between these two clubs last year. The Tigers off to a good start, though, against Minnesota. Winning on opening day, winning here today. Try and walk that one off. That hurts to look at. On a warm day, that hurts. Right. You probably had a few of those in your career. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, what's that like? It's not fun. You hit yourself on the inside part of your leg, but then you feel it on the outside part of your leg uh, the next day. Foot, that is. Tapper back up the middle. Iglesias behind the bag. Quick release, and Suzuki is out. Sanchez, one, two, three inning. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth.
bottom of the fifth inning, and while Cespedes enjoys a snack, we tell you to have your picnic or party in an upcoming Tigers game. 2015 group picnics and party suites on sale right now. Groups of 15 or more get a discount, and you can do those at select games. Call 313-471-BALL or Tigers.com. Here is the only man that did not hit back in the fourth inning. That's Castellanos. He'll start things off. Stoffer back out there. 7 0 Detroit. And Nick looks at strike oh. one. Castellanos, a fly ball and a strikeout. And make oh. it strike two. Stoffer took over for in Alaska, who was bumped from this game in the fourth inning. They want fastball away, and here it comes. Right off the mask of Suzuki. Kurt wears the old time mask. Of course, uh, Alex Avila has changed to the hockey style mask because of the concussion. Some guys just uh, do not like wearing those hockey style masks. More comfortable. The old time masks seem to be a lot lighter. Had a nice conversation with uh, Joe Mauer, uh, the former catcher you know, for the Minnesota Twins this morning in the Twins uh, dugout cl clubhouse. Excuse me. He said he really misses catching, but uh, because of the concussions, he will catch no more in the big leagues. I'm sure he misses catching, but he probably does not miss the pounding that is. One of the things he said about the concussions, he said that which each with each one that he would get, it would take longer for him to recover from those uh, concussions. So doctors, you know, said it'd be best if you didn't catch anymore. The one two bouncing in two and two. Of course, the twins, you know, they had the M&M &M boys in there, Maurer and uh, Morno, and Morno had the concussion problems as well. No longer a Minnesota twin, but that is something that has been more prevalent in the game now. Or at least they're paying more attention to it. Two, two is outside, three balls, two strikes. And Terry Ryan, their general manager, is a tremendous evaluator, and there's no doubt that he'll get it turned around again and get the Minnesota Twins winning baseball games. Bouncing ball to short, Santana with a backhand. And Castellanos 0 for 3, 1 gone. I think the Twins can start to see the light a little bit. I mean, they have a couple of dynamite prospects in Sano and Buxton on the way. They, they have some good talent with a big club. Most of their prospects are at double A. As a matter of fact, 12 of the top 30 uh, prospects in their organization are in double A right now, and they're playing for the former uh, first baseman for the Minnesota Twins, Doug Mankiewicz. He's their manager in double A. He has a lot of prospects. When the cabbage was a good big league hitter, wasn't he, he was good defender too. Here's Avila. Swing and a miss. Well, there's been a lot of stability at the top of the uh, the food chain for the Twins in terms of managers. They've had only what three managers since Tom Kelly took over in '86. They had Kelly, Gardenhire, and now Paul Molitor. Yeah, Gardenhire was there for 13 years before he was let go last year. They say those two guys right there are going to be really good players once they get to the big leagues. Byron Buxton, man, can't wait to see him get to the major leagues. Number one prospect overall. The Sano kid we showed on that uh, that graphic as well. He is a real big kid and he plays third base. He's got a lot of power. Huge power. Two balls, one strike on. Alex Avila. Oh. In there for a strike. Alex thought it might have been a tad high. And outside as well. Stoffer gets the benefit of the call. Chop foul. Good start to the campaign for Alex Avila. That's good to see. Alex last year hit just 218, but he had two hits on opening day, including a homer. 
and he has walked twice and scored twice in this game. That one just missed inside. 3 2. There is Iglesias waiting on deck. Here's the full count pitch. And he lost him. That's another walk for Avila, his third of the game. Well, they brought him around the first two times. We'll see if they can do it again. Another good day for Iglesias. Two more hits. He has scored twice. Iglesias couldn't buy a hit in spring training. Oh. Regular season starts. He's got four already. They can't get him out. That's it for a strike. Oh! The Glacius for most of spring training was hovering around the 100 mark at batting average and below at times. He'll shoot that one into right field. It's another knock. Lovila will go to second and stop there and the Glacius is three for three. Apparently it's payback time for that poor spring. I don't think he was trying to do this by design, but it worked out very nice for him. Joe Maurer initially uh, holding Avila on at the bag. He probably shouldn't have been holding him on. He might have been able to make that play, but he's able to hit one right past Joe Maurer. So let's update the eight nine hitters now. The first two days of the season, they're seven for nine. Very encouraging because we know what the top of the batting order is going to uh, do for the Tigers all season long. Goes fouls it away on one. Anthony had a two run triple in the fourth inning. There is J.R. Graham who is warming up. We saw him on opening day. He is the hardest thrower on their entire roster. To center field on a line, and that'll drop in. Short hop, base hit. They're going to throw to second, and Iglesias, who was hung up, will walk in there as the throw missed the uh, second baseman. Is Iglesias okay? Looks like it. He nearly cost Ghost a base hit. If Schaefer comes up and fires this ball to the bag right away, Glacius may not have gotten there. I think he would have been out. The high throw by Schaefer, if it's on the money, they may get that out there. For sure they oh, get the out. No doubt. Break there for the Tigers. That's the second hit of the game for Anthony Ghost. Bases are loaded now for Ian oh. Kinsler. Who's had himself a nice day. He's had three RBIs, a couple of hits, a couple of runs scored. There's Avila who once again got it started with a walk. Iglesias and Ghost. One ball, one strike. Ian has uh, taken a couple of uh, fastballs that have been relatively close to the dish. He might be sitting on another breaking ball. He has two hits today on breaking balls. One ball, one strike. David Price didn't have quite as much offense to work with on opening day, but he didn't need it. It's lofted in the air toward left. RC is on the move. Vila tagging. Catch is made. Here comes Alex. And he'll score standing up. Another RBI for Kinsler. That'll be the fourth of the afternoon for Ian. And Avila scores his third run of the day.
Tigers eight and the Twins nothing. Where's Cabrera? Right back up the middle into center field. Base hit. Iglesias rounding third. He will score. Ghost will go to third base. And another hit for Cabrera and another RBI. And the Tigers are not taking their foot off the gas pedal either. Nine nothing. And Mickey jumps on that first pitch fastball. Ripped right back through the middle. Iglesias with a real nice break off second base. Able to score rather easily and Ghost running from first. Able to get there without a play. And Paul Molitor says, looks like I gotta go to the bullpen again. Another wall side windows pitching change. We'll be back. been all Tigers this afternoon. They lead by a score of nine to nothing. Nine runs on ten hits for Detroit. They are still batting here in the fifth inning. And they'll do uh, their work against the new pitcher now. A young man we saw on opening day. J.R. Grant. Pitched two innings uh, on that afternoon and did not give up a run. He did give up a couple of hits but he spent all of last year in double A in Mississippi an affiliate of the Atlanta Braves organization. He was drafted in the rule five draft of this offseason by Minnesota. So here is Victor Martinez now with runners at first and third, two outs. And he swings in the first and rolls it right to Joe Mauer, and that's going to end the inning. So Graham does his job. Tigers add more, though. They lead 9-0.
Here as we go to the sixth inning, and it's April in the D on Fox Sports Detroit. Visit the life-size bobbleheads of Detroit Tigers Victor Martinez and Ian Kinsler. They're at the GM Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit. For more information on April in the D, visit foxsportsdetroit.com. And here we go back to work now. It's been a big day for Ian Kinsler. Ian has had four RBIs today. Backing up Vladimir Sanchez, who's been awfully good. Sanchez darts one right at the knees. Jordan Schaefer, strike one. Edible had 60 pitches through the first five innings, so the pitch count has just been in great shape all afternoon long. Here's the 0 1. Breaking ball dips low. Schaefer over one, fielder's choice ground ball. And rides up and in, and the count goes two and one on Schaefer. Schaefer claimed off waivers last year in the month of August. And from the Atlanta Braves. Played well down the stretch for Minnesota. I thought when he was coming up, he was a high draft choice of the Atlanta Braves. He was going to be a pretty good player in the National League. Really good speed. Good defender, good arm. Hold the right field ball hit well. And JD will turn, and that's going to go off the base of the wall. Schaefer is on his way to second, and he'll get in there with a stand up double. Well, we have a chance back to the studio for a game break. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mick, thank you very much. Here it is all Detroit. They lead 9 nothing. Really not a whole lot going on for the Twins offense, but they do have a leadoff double in the sixth. Danny Santana looks at ball one. Strikeout pop-up. This, by the way, is the first time the Twins have gotten a man in scoring position. Strike oh. home. Well, it's the longest drought to begin a season since 1940 for the Twins. 14 consecutive scoreless innings, which they're trying to break. And back in 1940, it was the Washington Senators. And they had uh, 19 consecutive scoreless innings to start a season. Swing and a miss. And this is kind of odd, Rod, right, because the Twins had scored about six runs a game against the Tigers last year. And they have the kind of offense where they can manufacture some runs. They've got some speed. They don't have much power in the middle of their batting order, but they've got some guys that can put the ball in play. They walked quite a bit last year as a team. Fouled off out of the uh, glove of Avila. But a couple of tough assignments for the Minnesota Twins hitters. Uh, going up against David Price on opening day, and now you have Anibal Sanchez here today. One and two the count. Santana did good work last year. He's trying to cut down on his strikeouts, though, and walk a little bit more. He had only 19 walks last year. He's got a swing and miss. Down he goes. Easier said than done when you're facing Sanchez, who has his fifth strikeout. Yeah, there's the changeup grip. Nice fading action away from Santana. Here is Brian Dozier. Avila giving chase, he will run out of real estate. Xfinity tells us that the best fastball so far this afternoon thrown by Anibal Sanchez has topped out at 92. It's gone as low as 74 with a breaking ball. 
Sanchez has a fastball that he can throw in the mid 90s, but hasn't had to get to that velocity today. Pulled on the ground to third right at Castellanos. Dozier is out, runner hold, Chafe run able to move. Still there with two outs. And Dozier is 0 for 3. Told you at the uh, top of the show that Dozier has had little success against uh, Anibal Sanchez. He's now 1 for 17 against him. Here's Joe Mauer. Single and a ground out for Mauer. One ball and no strikes. Not sure I ever remember Joe Mauer with a beard, do you? Almost didn't recognize him today, yeah. as a matter of fact. The 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Sanchez allowed the leadoff double trying to pitch through that here in the sixth inning. He's been in command all day long. And Maurer is up 3 0 in the count. There's Torrey waiting on deck. In there, three and one. Maori lifetime 319 hitter, and he's hopeful of getting back to uh, that area. He was at only 277 last year. He says he's healthy this year. The last couple of years, he's battled a number of different injuries. Three and two. How about this couple of years ago, May 2013, Anibal Sanchez nearly throws a no hitter. It was Maurer that broke up that no hitter with eight and third innings in that contest. But Maurer has broken up a lot of no hitters. Sanchez would go on to complete that game. But he gained that close to another no hitter. Where you might recall in the days of the Metrodome was uh, was hitting some home runs. There are the uh, final numbers in that game on May 24th of 13. Joe had 28 home runs in 2009 of the Metro. He had hit 28 combined since then, has no, <laughs> no X. As a matter of fact, he hasn't. He's had 27 combined since. <laughs> so Target Field is a little bit of a different animal. It's popped up. Shallow left field for Iglesias. And that is that for Minnesota. They get a leadoff double with Strandon. Here comes the bottom of the sixth.
Minnesota Twins this afternoon. Ricky Nolasco, their starter. He's part of our Bell Tire pitch by pitch. He had a couple of good starts against the Tigers last year and was able to get them to chase some breaking balls, but they didn't chase any breaking balls today. And most of the damage they did against him, they made him get the breaking ball up. And when they got the breaking balls they were looking for, they didn't miss him. Real rough outing today for Ricky Nolasco. First year manager Paul Molitor had to go get him after just three innings pitched. Yeah, and he's going back to his bullpen now as lefty Aaron Thompson takes over. And seven appearances last year in a Twins uniform for uh, Thompson. 46 total uh, games he pitched at Rochester. 58 and two-thirds innings with an outstanding ERA and a nice uh, base on balls to strikeouts ratio. J.D. Martinez leads it off, and that one got the home plate umpire, Kerwin Danley. This Tigers offense, relentless. And picking up really right where it left off last year, where it was one of your better offensive clubs in all of baseball. Yeah, Vila has been somewhat of a catalyst today in each of their three big innings. Uh, Vila's had a walk and has scored a run twice, leading off the inning with a walk. Top of the order has been driving him in. Bottom of the order has been scoring the runs. It's in there for a strike. Tigers have a new assistant hitting coach this year, Dave Newhand. It's his first year. In that capacity, Darnell Coles is the new hitting coach for the Milwaukee Braves. So Darnell Coles did nice work last year. Here's the 0-2 missing high, 1-2. And, and have you ever met a nicer guy than Darnell Coles? I have not. I have not. D.C. D.C., good man. Do a good job there. There's a soft liner caught by the second base. A chance to uh, spend some time with uh, David Newhand during Tigers Caravan. We went up north on the north bus, and uh, David really looking forward to his opportunity here. And he'll work closely with uh, Wally Joyner, who is the hitting coach for the Tigers. So it's really a good duo. And he's acquitted himself nicely already working with the hitters. Uh, several hitters have commented to me that uh, they've really enjoyed working with David Newhand. Anthony Ghost would be one of those. Here is Ioannis Cespedes. Bouncing ball to second. Dozier charging this one. And they get Ioannis to gone. By the way, every weeknight, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around is weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1, and it's streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Two up, two down now for Castellanos, who's trying to join the party here. Tigers had 10 hits, but Nick is 0 for 3. Pulls that one foul. Dave Clark let that one go by, man. Slid right behind him. It's too cold to bend over and get those baseballs. Although Clark has been busy down at third base today, waving in runner after runner. It's helped him stay loose. Huh. It's helped him stay warm, waving that left arm. The ground ball foul. Aaron Thompson hails from Santa Fe, New Mexico. At one time was a number one pick of the Marlins. A few years back, back in 2005. Number right back to the mound. Going to be an easy inning for Thompson. One, two, three, go the Tigers, which means we go to the seventh.
the bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by wall side windows. We can do that. We are the factory. They are bundled up. Jackets, blankets, whatever it takes. Caps, hats. To keep warm here this afternoon. It was 39 at game time. The uh, Tigers bats though. Despite the cool temps have been red hot. They lead nine to nothing. And we should not shortchange Anibal Sanchez, who's been red hot as well today. Yeah, a lot of first pitch strikes. He's moved his fastball around. He's been able to command the fastball. He's thrown some outstanding butterfly changeups. Really, Anibal Sanchez is doing exactly as he has always done since putting on the Tigers uniform when he's been healthy. He's one of your better right handed pitchers in the game. One ball, one strike on Torrey Hunter. Or he sends it foul on the ground. You use the term butterfly changeup. Is that just what he calls it, or is it a different grip? No, I think that's just what he calls his. You know, certain guys like to yeah, nickname some of their pitches, and his yeah, pretty much floats up there like a butterfly. And here comes the one two. Way high. Two balls, two strikes on Torrey. Pop up, strikeout today for Hunter. Waiting on deck is Kenny Vargas. He missed again. So Hunter lays off a couple of uh, high pitches, and the count goes full now, three and two. Fouled away. Torrey had himself a nice spring, hit 357 in his first year back with Minnesota. But he is largely surrounded by a very young team with the Twins, which is a stark contrast to the Tigers' clubhouse. Again, the 3 2. That's popped up. It'll be Kinsler on the grass. One gone here in the seventh. He'll bring up Kenny Vargas. Sanchez has limited the Twins to just three hits in this contest today. A double and two singles. That floats oh. in for a strike, 0 and 1. And by all accounts, Rod, uh, Kenny Vargas has a high upside, especially in the power territory. He can reach the seats in any direction, whether it be left field, straightaway center, or right field. He had 19 home runs in the minor leagues last year. Came up to the big leagues, hit nine more. Bypassed a triple A. Most of his numbers were put up in double A. Waving a miss. That's what he did do a lot of last year. He chased a lot of breaking balls down. Didn't walk very much, but that all comes with maturity. Part of the Twins offense that last year was fifth in the American League and run scored. Would not chase high. Two balls, two strikes. And that fastball was up by design. He wanted to see if Vargas would chase it. He can go a couple different ways now. He can simply spot his fastball. He could throw a changeup up there at the bottom of the zone that more than likely he'd swing over the top of. He left that one alone as well. Three and two. In ball four. It's the yeah. first walk of the game. Yeah. And he comes here in the seventh. It was pretty close. It sure was. Full Elms borderline.
That was just his fourth full count of the day. Tigers get on the telephone now to get the bullpen working. Here's Trevor Plouffe. Ball one. Sanchez now up over the 90 mark. The 100 plateau is an area that is closely watched here in the first start of the season. Oh. It was for Price. It'll be the same for Sanchez. And they won't allow him to go above 100, would be my guess. Angel Nesbitt warming up, or at least loosening. He better hurry up. Sanchez yeah. at 94 pitches. I was going to say. Here's the 2 1. 2 2 now on Trevor Plouffe. Still looking for his first hit of the season as you uh, scope out one of the surprises of camp on Hell Nesbitt. Made the team out of spring training for the first time in his career. And that one missed three and two, another full count. RC awaiting on deck. One out base on balls to Vargas. Ploof has a fly ball and a strikeout. And that one bounces in. And so now the Twins get something going here with back to back walks. And here comes Jeff Jones bouncing out of the Tiger dugout. Well, fans, we remind you to follow the Tigers all season long in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. So look at the pitches by inning for Sanchez. See the sixth and seventh innings, they're elevated a little bit, but still by and large pretty good all the way through. So now the Twins will set up Osvaldo Arcia with two on and one out. And Arcia looks at a strike going oh. one. Pop up single today for Arcia. He was had to move to left field this year with the addition of Tory Hunter, who is patrolling right. Oh, and two. So this next one now for Sanchez will be an even 100. Floats outside, one ball, two strikes. The last one is 68 miles an hour. And here is the Sanchez ratio after 100 pitches. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Tipped it into the glove. Make it six strikeouts now for Sanchez, and that's going to be it for Ibal. Brad Ausmus coming out of the Tiger dugout. And so the uh, second trip to the mound means that'll be it for Sanchez. Good work here in his first start of the year. And the youngster, Angel Nesbitt, about to make his major league debut, but a nice round of applause for Ibal Sanchez.
Minnesota Twins, and there is Angel Nesbitt about to make his major league debut. Every year in spring training, there's a youngster that just kind of wows everybody in spring training, and that was the case this year with Nesbitt. Uh, he was tremendous in spring training. He just uh, showed a fastball in the mid-90s. He was working on a two-seamer. Nice breaking ball, and you can see his numbers in the minor leagues last year were pretty good. And a really good spot to bring him in. It's a blowout game. Get his feet wet here late in this contest. And his first one is in down the middle of strike. 0 and 1 on Kurt Suzuki. Tigers lead at 9 0. And the 0 1. One ball and one strike on Suzuki. The uh, Twins put together a couple of walks and Sanchez. Sonival over the 100 marker. And so Nesbitt coming into the game. Ian Kroll, the left hander, tuning up down the Detroit bullpen. And those two guys, Nesbitt and Kroll, Rod, I think are a reason for optimism, especially the way that, that both of them pitch in spring training. Kroll, mid 90s fastball. He's working on his breaking ball. And they. Detected a flaw in his delivery. They fixed that. Of course, he was big in that trade uh, okay. last year for Doug Fister. Yeah. Yeah, Robbie Ray is now gone, and uh, Kroll remains from that trade. Two balls, one strike on Kurt Suzuki. And he missed outside three and one. Here's the 3 1 from Nesbitt. Bouncing ball left side. On the move is Iglesias. Suzuki is out. Nesbitt does his job. Jose Iglesias has had a big day offensively in this one. Three runs scored, three hits. Season nine nothing is our score and let's take a look at the Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game How about these guys eight and nine hitters today have been delivering three for three? They have scored six runs. They were pretty good on Monday as well They were combined four for six on opening day and the eight and nine guys would be Avila and Iglesias They will start things off here in the seventh And Avila has gotten a jump started every at bat. Three walks, three runs scored in this game. First pitch is hit toward right field and 
past the diving second baseman, a single for Avila. Have a day, Alex. On base for the fourth time. So here is Iglesias now with two singles, a double, and three runs scored. That is the 11th hit this afternoon for Detroit. And that one just missed at the knees, 1 0 the count. Aaron Thompson came on, got the Tigers quickly in the sixth, 1 2 3. That's it for a strike. 1-1 one, one the count. Pulled on the ground and threw a base hit. Man, oh man. So it, the Glacius on for the fourth time. Is it that easy, Jose? Spring training is a distant memory now for Iglesias. He is four for four. The eight and nine hitters today have been on base all eight plate appearances. Is Wally looking at Jonesy? Yeah, your pitchers are doing pretty good. My hitters aren't too shabby either. <laughs> pretty amazing numbers. Here's Anthony Ghost. That is 12 Tigers hits. Side away 1 0. Got a lot of changes for the uh, Minnesota Twins. Robinson is the new right fielder. Plouffe has moved to first base, and Nunez is now at third. Oh. Mauer is out of the game. Ghost didn't like that last call. Nice day for Anthony. Triple scored two, singled in the fifth inning. Two and one. Singles by Avila and Iglesias. Tigers gave up at the time their number one prospect, Devin Travis, a second baseman who is in the big leagues now with uh, Toronto. In fact, he homered his first uh, big league game with the Blue Jays. First major league at bat. Was it his first at bat? I believe so. And they got Ghost in return to provide them with some speed. He got them to play center field, but what he's provided to them offensively in spring opened up some eyes. He sliced that one toward left field, hit pretty well. RC is on the move, not going to get it over his head. Avila comes around to score, and Iglesias will get to third base. It's a double and another hit for Ghost. You know, one of the things I've noticed about the uh, Minnesota Twins, they play very shallow defensively. Schaefer in center field plays shallow. Arcia also plays shallow and, shallow and Ghost able to hit that ball over the head of Arcia. It's a breaking ball that stays right over the heart of the plate. Nice approach there by Anthony. It goes his third RBI of the game. And Avila has come around to score four runs this afternoon. Oh. Strike one to Kinsler. I think one of the reasons why the Tigers decided to trade uh, Devin Travis uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays, they knew they had a second baseman for the next number of years in Ian Kinsler. Yeah, they uh, certainly filled a void and gave up a position of strength, at least at the big league level. Ghost was uh, pretty much well over 300 most of spring camp. He finished at 299. 
but seemed to be on base every game was wreaking havoc on the base paths as well stole six bases this spring. One two is hit off his foot. That's a foul ball. The eight and nine hitters have scored seven of the Tigers ten runs. Here's Miguel waiting on deck. Thompson after breezing through the sixth is scuffling here in the seventh. That has popped up. Second base side for Dozier. And it's the first out of the inning. Here is the 1 800 call Sam call of the game. It happened back in the third inning. Ian Kinsler on the move from first base. Biggie doubling down in the left field corner. Of course, Kinsler able to score all the way from first base on the double and the first RBI of the year for. Miguel Cabrera that put the Tigers in the lead three to nothing. And here is Cabrera once again two out of three today double and a single. He can rack up a few more RBIs with a base hit here. Lifted in the air down the right field line and foul. Thirteen Tigers hits. And only three surrendered by Detroit pitching. Iglesias at third, Ghost at second. Ball high, 1-1. One, one. These two teams will wrap up the series tomorrow. Get our first look at Shane Green, who will make his Tigers debut in the regular season. We'll start tomorrow against Kyle Gibson. Meanwhile, there's still action in the Detroit bullpen. That would be lefty Ian Kroll. Yeah. Here's the one two. High fly ball to Robinson and right, not deep. Not going to be deep enough to score the run. And there are two gone now. We talked about the probables here, the particulars on the probables brought to you by Gordon Chevrolet. This is what the matchup will look like tomorrow. And Shane Green getting his first start in a Tigers uniform going up against the left, excuse me, the right hander, Kyle Gibson. We'll have the uh, broadcast for you before we hit the road for the first time. Tigers going to Cleveland and Pittsburgh on that first road trip. Here's Victor Martinez. They're going to let him hit this time. He's been walked intentionally twice in this game. We've got a four o'clock start on Friday and then a couple of one o'clock starts in Cleveland, correct? Oh, four o'clock Saturday, Saturday as well, right? Here's the 1 0. Driven toward left field. Arcea started in. Now he's going to have to reach to make the catch. So the Tigers will get another run. Seven in the books.
coming up on Tigers Live post game. We check in with Justin White. Hey, Mario, what a start to the season for the Tigers. And coming up after the game, we will recap it all on Tigers Live. I'll be chatting with players, including Alex Avila and Jose Iglesias. What a day for those two guys. We'll also get the thoughts of Anibal Sanchez on his first start of the season, plus the post game press conference of Brad Ausmus. It's Mickey York and Craig Monroe in the Call Sam Studios on Tigers Live right after the game. Mario and Rod, back to you guys for now. All right, Justin, thanks. I would imagine a lot of optimism coming out of the uh, Tigers locker room after this one, so stay tuned for Tigers Live post game. In the meantime, we've got a new Tigers pitcher now. That'll be lefty Ian Kroll checking in. Well, Ian Kroll had a nice spring. The ball was coming out of his hand nicely, fastball firm. Anywhere from 93 to 96, he has an outstanding curveball. He's worked on his changeup as well. You can see in 45 games last year, the ERA nearly five for Ian Kroll. Jordan Schaefer will start things off here for the Minnesota Twins. Kroll missing high, ball one. Kroll late in spring camp as you look at Hernan Perez, who takes over at first base for Miguel Cabrera. Kroll was in a battle to uh, win a spot as one of the left handers coming out of the bullpen for the Tigers. And he mentioned, oh. man, it was a dogfight. He knew that he was going to have to work out hard in the offseason, get into great shape, and pitch well this spring to make the team. Well, Blaine Hardy, who was sent down to lead to Toledo. Kyle Ryan also sent down to the Toledo. Those were two of the final cuts, a couple of left handers he was battling with. And the last fastball at 96. I think ultimately this is the reason why he won the job. He has the ability to get you a strikeout a real late in the game, whereas Hardy and Ryan, both of those guys, pitch to a little bit more contact. Ryan will be a starter in Triple A. 3 1 now the count. Yeah, but this is what he can't do if he's going to pitch late in games. He can't come in and walk people. Schaefer, one of the three hits that Minnesota has, a double. Luke foul. Three balls, two strikes. And he got him, strike three. Schaefer, not a fan of that call from Kerwin Danley. It's a 94 mile per hour fastball. Schaefer thought it was up. Kerwin Danley said, nope, strike three. Here's Danny Santana. Last year, making 45 appearances out of the Detroit bullpen. He had some shoulder inflammation last year, which put him on the disabled list in late June into July. Here's the 1 0. And one of the things that Kroll really worked on in spring training was the fact that when he does throw his breaking ball and his changeup, he tries not to slow his body down. He felt like he was tipping his off speed pitches last year. Because the body would slow down when he was throwing off speed pitches, the arm would decelerate. Well, he's fallen behind Santana now, 3 0. Oh. 3 1. Danny's had a tough day, a couple of strikeouts and a pop up 0 for 3. Escobar in the on deck circle. Strike three and two. Every fastball that uh, Kroll has thrown has been pretty much 93 miles an hour and above. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Kroll falls behind three and oh and comes back to strike out Santana. Tigers pitching now has eight strikeouts today. Much to the delight of Jeff Jones. 
And I would think for Jeff Jones, the first two games in terms of your starting pitching have gone according to the script. For sure. Price on Monday, Sanchez today. Escobar gets in at bat here in the eighth inning. Honeyball went six and two thirds, three hits, no runs. Don't know for sure, but more than likely, this at bat given to Escobar here in the eighth inning is one that will lead to a four plate appearances for him tomorrow. Twins struggling to score runs, and Escobar was one of their better offensive players last year. He just doesn't have a position right now. And once again, Kroll falls behind, this time 2 0. Swing there by Escobar. And that got Avila. Where'd it get him? Ooh, right there. Where did the collar ball? The 2 1. 2 and 2 now on Eduardo Escobar. Nice breaking ball there thrown by Crow. One of the few he's thrown in the inning. Escobar batted 344 this spring. Ball high, 3 and 2. Escobar played shortstop last year. And Danny Santana was playing center field. And now Santana is the everyday shortstop. Also right back in the mound. This will be routine for Kroll. And it's going to be a 1 2 3 8. Minnesota. Chevrolet brings you the hard working steal of the game. It was way back in the first inning when Torrey Hunter took a double, possible triple away from Ian Kinsler. That's about all they stole today because the Tigers have peppered them since. To the tune of uh, 13 hits in this game. We've got a new pitcher now. Blaine Boyer has checked in. In 32 games last season for Boyer, he had a nice earned run average, just a shade over three and a half, pitching 40 plus innings. The opponents hit just 22 28 against him. And Escobar remains the game, taking over for Dozier at second base. Here is JD Martinez who takes ball one. JD is 0 for 4 in this contest. Well, Schaefer. 
Schaefer on the run, not going to get it. Up against the wall in center field, and that's going to be an extra base hit for J.D. Martinez. Which brings us to our Comerica Bank game summary here this afternoon. All Tigers in this one, a lot to talk about as well. Tigers doing it both on the mound and at the dish. Innings three through five, they scored nine runs on ten hits. Sanchez, great job, and Kinsler has had a big day. Following up that two for four game on Monday. Total it up, it's 10 0 Detroit. Here's Iwana Cespedes. Tigers now have 14, count them, 14 hits. Only three for Minnesota this afternoon. Ball one. Lane Boyer, born in Atlanta, lives in Marietta, Georgia, and played with his hometown Braves beginning in 2005. He was a third round pick of the Braves in 2000. The 1 0, he overthrew and sails it outside, 2 0. I don't know how Suzuki was able to catch that fastball at 91 miles an hour, but he did. Something the Atlanta Braves have uh, been able to stockpile a lot of, and that's young pitching with all the moves they made in the offseason under their new uh, general manager, and John Hart. Get back out of play, two and one. Boyer, aside from his time with the Atlanta Braves, also has pitched with Arizona, St. Louis, and most recently San Diego last year. So strictly National League until this year. To center field. This time straight at Schaefer. One gone. Well, that's something that uh, Terry Ryan, the general manager, desperately uh, looks for every offseason and even during the course of the season. They've got to. Uh, find a way to get better on the pitching end of things. The last couple of years, they finished dead last in ERA. And then the previous year to that, 2013, uh, they were 29th. So they've just struggled on the mound. And, uh, and you talk about stockpiling hard throwers the Braves have done. I mean, the, the Twins really recently haven't had guys that strike out a lot of batters. In fact, they were dead last, the rotation was, in strikeouts last year. Pitching to a lot of contact. And Castellanos trying to get his first hit of the day. They were very successful doing so when they played in the Metro Dome. They had guys in the starting rotation like Brad Ratke, guys that threw a lot of strikes, guys that pitched to the defense, and they played on that artificial surface. But since they've moved into their new ballpark, they haven't played all that well. They had a couple of guys that could strike you out, though, and that would be Santana and Liriano. Yep. Before Liriano got hurt. Randke though was kind of the epitome of what they uh, what they had a, you know a guy that was an outstanding pitcher but was a guy that just pitched to contact yeah, move his fastball around threw a lot of ground ball. Here's the one one. Pull to the shortstop. And Castellanos is out two gone. So Avila's day is done and it looks like the youngster McCann will get in his bat. So the numbers last year for James McCann at Toledo. They're very high on James McCann. And you can see why. 295 batting average with seven home runs. He drove in 54 uh, last year. He'll get quite a bit of playing time this year, backing up Alex Avila. And so Brad is able to get him at a bat here. You really don't, at the beginning of the season, want to go too long with your backups in terms of at least seeing the field for. A pinch hit, and there's a pinch hit single that's going to drive in a run for McCann. And the Tigers lead 11 to nothing. So McCann joins the act at number eight spot today, and the Tigers' uh, batting order is simply money. Avila was on four times today, and now McCann gets a base hit. 
First career RBI for James McCann. Fifteen Tigers hits, and here is Iglesias. Ball one. Big day for Iglesias as well. Four hit game. Oh! Iglesias right now is batting 857. <laughs> is that good? I've never seen that average. 857. It's pretty good. It's likely to go down, but it's pretty good. That was up and in. Four for four today, and two for three in the opening game for Iglesias. There's the Tiger bullpen. Soria, Albuquerque. It's blowing in. Three and one. So Iglesias is on for the fifth time. It'll bring him in, then he goes. Hitters got to love coming out of the gates and putting up a lot of hits early because it kind of gives you a little bit of a cushion, doesn't it? Especially if you can get it done in the colder weather because you know once the weather starts to warm up, it's going to be a little easier for you to swing the bat. So uh, guys like Avila, guys like Ghost, guys like... Uh, Iglesias. Yep, they've gotten off to terrific starts. Kinsler. Kinsler. Oh. Yeah. Strike one on Ghost. Single, double, triple for Anthony Ghost. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1 1. Checked it up high, 2 and 1. Here is Boyer's 2 1 pitch. Lifted back out of play, 2 and 2 on Ghosts. He's yet another Tiger making a nice debut. We saw Cespedes have a double, triple, and a great defensive play in the opener. Ghost is a homer away from the cycle here today. You calling this? Well, he swung at it like he tried to hit it out on that 2-1 fastball. He might as well go for it. It floats outside. Three and two now on Ghost. Don't get a fastball, right? Runners will go here on 3 2. And it's sprayed foul back into the seats. Ghost had a triple back in the fourth to knock in two, doubled in a run in the seventh. Another foul back out of play. Last year played in a career high 94 games with Toronto. He will uh, certainly eclipse that record or that mark this year. And it's right 
back up the middle but flagged out a hop by Santana. He'll throw in time to retire the side. Tigers get another run as we go to the ninth. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. April and the D, I'm telling you, man, we've got the Wings tomorrow against Montreal, and here we'll kick off our coverage tomorrow with the Tigers Twins, and that begins at noon with Tigers Live. Tigers and Twins right here on Fox Sports Detroit. April and the D is in uh, high gear right now. Well, it's been a uh, chilly afternoon here, but 28,280 braved the cold here today and watched the ball game. I guarantee you it's a whole lot colder in the Minnesota Twins dugout than it is in the Tigers dugout. Here is Al Albuquerque to get an inning of work and try and put this one in the wind column. Nunez leads it off and looks at ball one. Albuquerque 63 strikeouts last year and 57 innings pitched. Roll minus and left. McCann stays in the game and is behind the dish. Both managers using this lopsided score for an opportunity to give some of the backups a little bit of playing time. Saw his bat in half and it rolls in a short center field base hit. Let's take a look at the big boy, big plays of the game. Anthony Ghost making his debut in the Tiger Whites. Had a real nice day, his first time up today. Uh, he tripled the ball, got past Torrey Hunter in right field. And with Ghost's speed, he was able to get to third base and he singled. Sharply up the middle his next time up and he doubled the opposite way so Ghost was able to use the entire baseball field today triple to right single up the middle double to left Oh a strike called Shane Robinson's first hit back to the series One ball, two strikes on Robinson. Albuquerque, for the most part, just two pitches. A fastball that will get into the mid 90s. And he's got a couple of different sliders. One strike, one slider just to get over. And then he has that real nasty slider that he likes to throw with two strikes when he's looking for a strikeout. It might be a good time right here for Albuquerque to get his first strikeout of the year. Be on board with that. Missed with it. 
two. Full count now, three and two on Shane Robinson. Chris Herman has moved to the on deck circle. A little bad for Vargas. Three two is strike three called. See you later. First strikeout for Albuquerque. He has more confidence in throwing his slider for a strike than he does his fastball. Now here's a 3 2 breaking ball that just buckled the knees of Robinson. So here is Chris Herman now with one out, batting for Vargas. 13 last year in 33 ball games for Minnesota. And I guess, Ron, if you're going to be on the short end of a blowout, you might as well get some of your bench players in there and at least uh, shake off a little bit of the rust. Especially at the uh, beginning of the season. Lifted in the air. Right center field. And caught out there by J.D. Two guns are one out away from uh, starting the year on back to back. And a shutout. Brad Osmus coming out now, and he's already made the call to the bullpen. So Soria coming out, and we'll step aside. We'll be back. 11 nothing Detroit. to nothing as we play here in the top of the ninth inning. There are two outs and Joaquin Soria coming out of the bullpen to try and get that final out. Outstanding spring training for Joaquin Soria. Get a look at his numbers from a season ago. Half the year with the Texas Rangers and he also spent some time in a Tigers uniform. Oh. Runner will go and take second base on that first pitch from Soria. So Nunez in scoring position now, and there's a high fly ball to left field. Romine going back to the track. He'll haul it in, and the Tigers have shut out the Minnesota Twins again. 11 to nothing, the final score in this one.